uh, so just the, the culture of innovation here is very different than anywhere else that I've seen. Our ambition is to turn our customers in India uh, from being mobile first and data first to being AI first. How do we make that AI not just personal, but how do we make that unique? But not many people understand about AI, is it really does help you scale. Oh, we are living the future. The future is now, we're making it do things that have never been possible before. So John, IMC 2024 seems to be very attractive as a place for a use case of the technology and telecommunication growth we have. How have you experienced IMC 2024 this time? It's been fabulous to be at one of the regional uh, mobile congresses. I've, I've done the global mobile con congresses okay. before. Uh, it's just wonderful seeing the concentration of ideas that come out of India. Um, it, it's a, such a fertile place uh, for experimentation. Uh, the digital services that the operators provide, the UDI, world leading. Uh, so just the, the culture of innovation here is very different than anywhere else that I've seen. How do you find it different over here? What do you think is unique about our innovative approach? I think the level of um, care of society, that is something that's very, Emotional, very different. Emotional, mindful of everything. I think very, very mindful. Um, the, the, uh, there's cultural sensibility there. There's a lot of inclusion work. Uh, there is trying to uh, make sure nobody is left behind. Everybody does have access to services, does have access to banking, does have access to uh, mobility. Yes. Uh, those things are really, really important. And I think India does those a lot better than other markets that I've, that I've been operating in. Coming from the Ola space, which is a which is a sector which is which is a company which has given a lot of end user service, has got a huge marketplace mm. for itself, and utility has been the top game for the Ola company. How are you looking at technology playing a role? In that, it plays a great role. It is an app driven uh, service that is available. How do you embed technology, evolution in telecommunication, AI, everything in that? You're the person who writes the technological aspect. So how are you looking? At I think it's a wonderful environment to have those kind of really groundbreaking thoughts. Okay. Um, I'm very much involved with uh, Ulla Kutrum, which is the AI uh, and silicon part of uh, Ulla, providing a lot of those AI customer care uh, services. Okay. Now, that enables us to scale. In the old days, you'd have to have one person talking to another person. Yes. It's wonderful for a podcast, more difficult to scale. And that's one of the key areas where we see AI and specifically AI developed for India trained on on what we would like to offer our customers that's a real differentiator that, that Ola Kutram has it helps us to scale it helps us to provide a personal level of service to all but in of our the customers. process of scaling won't you lose out the personal one-to-one -one feedback that you would get or maybe AI does miss out the emotional aspect of oh I don't think so I think AI it's not a one-way conversation okay. so when you're talking with AI it's, it's not reading off a script. Uh, it is actually having an interactive conversation and it is capturing that information. So it does have some empathy. It does capture the, the prescient details. And if it does get a bit too much, that's when you hand it off to a human operator. So it kind of removes the first layer of that, hmm. knowing what you want, what problems you have to take you to the next level, not getting stuck with the first layer and wasting your time. I think it's providing a better service to those customers so they can feel heard and they know what the call is about. Then we can be, not more efficient, but we can actually add, yeah, address the concerns that our customers have. Sometimes, as you know, you interview a lot of people, getting down to the truth of the matter sometimes requires a little bit of digging. Some people don't even understand really what they want or the issue that they're having that they need help with to resolve. Uh, it's, a, it's another tool we can use. From the company point of view, do you think we are too late to come to adapting AI now because you are helping a company grow its path mm. through the technology and upscale faster? I think ambition is a key part of it. And our ambition is to turn our customers in India uh, from being mobile first and data first to being AI first. Yeah. That's the, that's the. What would be the key the, to educate them? How this is a difficult task. It is a difficult task. AI is so new. I mean, the, the future is now. Yes. We are living the future. And I think starting with things that AI is very, very good at, as I said, building our own foundational model that really does have the right sensibilities. It does understand you know, our customers because it's been shaped Tell me a for story that. if you've ever encountered it going wrong. How difficult has it been? Just just the real experience. A real experience is... All right, wrong or right. How was your experience? Any story that you recall and you would like to share? I work with a number of international colleagues, yes. not just in India, the majority of everyone's in India, but there are a few of my colleagues who started using the AI uh, and they're from a very different background and they started sounding like my colleagues that are in Bangalore. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yes, that's nice. I understand where that's coming from. But you clearly used our AI to help with that response. 
And I think that was the thing that we're looking at. How do we make that AI not just personal, but how do we make that unique? If I want to so have... So it was like a very overwhelming experience for them to work with AI, to engage with AI and get their problem solved? It was interesting, but the, the voice came out as, as the AI's voice, oh. not as their voice. So I think, again, the future is now. We're making it do things that have never been possible before. Right? And it's enabling us to scale. It's enabling us to serve our customers better. Um, and ourselves, we're looking at this, but also if you look at like ChatGTP as a good example, everything yes. sounds the same. I need help uh, 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 crafting a, uh, a business invite, or I need help in explaining a, a but concept. But also how you instruct your ChatGPT works, whether you that can use true. it properly or not. So the ability to use the AI properly, even if it is embedded with Ola services, how would you that ensure that? That people are able to use it wisely, sensibly, mm. and not just go direct and try to get the best out of it. That's what we're actually learning now. There are some things we could do from the cloud side. Okay. I think we were talking about cloud and edge earlier today. There are some things we can do to the cloud side, making sure that it's giving appropriate answers, okay. um, answers that the customers want. Um, but also there are some things we can do to help smooth that process. Um, we were mentioning you know, customer support. Again, even before you get to the AI, is it a billing problem? Is it a, a driver problem? Is it a location problem? Is it a cancellation problem? Again, we can use that to help frame the responses so the AI is ready. It's not jumping into the conversation without any preparation either. So there are definitely things we can do on both sides. One thing you have to leave me with is, since we're talking so much about AI and your services are close to the technology mm. solutions that you give through AI, what are the advantage, two advantages of the artificial intelligence world today and two disadvantages as well? Oh, that's an interesting one. I think the real power that not many people understand about AI is it really does help you scale. Okay. We are having a conversation one-to-one, -one, but if I'm having a conversation with an AI version of you, there could be thousands of like me yes. having the same, uh, similar conversation, so unique conversations. the sample and the trend and the pattern? It, it allows us to scale very dynamically, right? When you, again, when we have a very busy, busy customer uh, service period, we have enough AI agents to be able to answer everybody. Sure. Uh, whereas when it's a quiet period, we, don't, we can be using that those AI resources to do something else. I think one of the negative, or well, one of the disadvantages of AI, as you mentioned, there is this education that has to go through. You have to develop a, tr uh, a reputation for trust. And that's something that AI is certainly learning. <laughs> um, uh, but that is, again, something we can address both on the cloud side and in the way that we actually start framing uh, those kind of queries to the AI. But I think that's a key area where we're looking at. How do we make sure that the AI, AI voice sounds unique to you and the conversation you are having? How do we make sure that the information that is being given is right and is, yes. it is trusted? Part of it is a technical thing, part of it is a reputation. You know, bringing that reputation yes. into it is a very, very important thing. People trust their phones as a communication device. The phone needs to be reliable. Needs, people need to develop that kind of trust in AI as well. And again, I think India is a very, very key market for developing that. Trust. Quick things, John, if I want to ask you about these words or terms that I talk about now, mm -hmm. Ola. <laughs> Innovation. Artificial intelligence. Scale. Scale. Mm. Telecommunication today. Essential infrastructure. Your favorite gadget. Uh, I have to say my smartwatch. Oh, <laughs> you can't do without it. No, it helps me sleep, helps me keep healthy. And the fastest growing technology today that will certainly find its future very soon. Is there something you have identified? I have more than, more than one word on that. <laughs> we love an AI ecosystem, yes. not just one AI device, but really... Uh, something which aggregates all the AI solutions together or the yes. software. How I, does I that think, work? It's really, I think it's about the services. Um, when you combine AI devices, smart networks, cloud infrastructure, and all the information systems on the web, the public and the private infrastructure, and all the other services there, then I think you're going to get something very, very special. You will get something special or it'll be a confused ecosystem to not know how to use what and No, no, no. I think that's the challenge that we've got. You can explain things simply. And again, it's a service. A service is a job that the customer wants to be done. The customer's always very clear about what they want. I need to go from A to B, or I need to get this information, or I need to book this ticket. The customers know what the job they want to do. Our role is to help them do that. I think Ola has done that great till now and with your conversation, I'm quite convinced where they get the entire technology service from is your brain. So thank you so much, John, for being no. a part of this uh, small mini podcast that we're doing at IMC and hope you come here next time around as well. I'm looking forward to attending next year too. Thank and you so much. And we see our progress too. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you.